What's up guys, it's DDP. If there's one word I can think of that really summarizes the Mavericks free agency period thus far, it's continuity. Now I wish I could say I was the first person to make that observation. I am not, I believe that goes to Brad Townsend uh, who had a tweet referencing that. And you look at it and it makes a lot of sense, right? The Mavericks have largely re-sign their own guys and house obviously even kp would count as re-signing your own guy even though we still haven't seen him actually play for the mavericks so you re-sign kp you re-sign dwight powell you re-sign maxi kleba you re-sign jj Barea, you re-sign dodo dorian finney smith you re-signed a lot of guys in house and the only two faces that have come from the team well, one of them is a former Maverick from just the year before last as well, and Seth Curry. The only real fresh face here is who just got picked up, uh, Bobin. So that's the first new fresh face here. By the way, fun fact, with seven foot three, Bobin, oh, seven foot three. Oh, yo, welcome to the new subscriber, Gabriel. What's up? Uh, Porzingis also seven foot three, and Salah Mejri, who's still on the roster, seven foot two. I'm pretty sure the Mavericks now have the three tallest players in the NBA, which interesting. I mean, in 2019, you wouldn't think that's the direction you'd want to go, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, anyway, I digress. People look at this team and they think, why? Why would you resign your own guys? You were a 34 win team, I want to say last year. That's just plucking off the top of my head, mid 30s for sure and you missed the playoffs, so why do you largely roll it back when you had some of these free agents out there? Well, before his injury last year, before J.J. Barea's Achilles injury, the Mavericks actually had one of the probably three best bench units in the entire NBA, right up there with the Clippers, frankly. And what kind of derailed them on that was the Barea injury. So while Barea coming back age 35 off an Achilles, by no means is there any guarantee in fact i would say it's unlikely that he returns to form but you got him on the mle a mid-level exception maybe a little bit more than that they might just wait until the end of their free agency spending and then just say hey instead of 2.5 we got 2.7 for you here you go it just depends uh by the way i think bobin is also 2.7 million as well for the mavericks and that's i i think if you're gonna pick him up that's good quality to pick him up because he's not going to be an every night player for you um, so with Berea returning, if he can return to any, any form of himself, keep in mind, he was coming off. He was having a career best year when he went down with the injury. So if he can have any semblance of that form back, great. If it's just leadership, fine. Obviously he was so much of what made that second unit go. And you're going to have to figure that out. But Maxi and Dwight and Dodo, those guys were really good for the bench unit as well. So I think Dallas largely looks at it and says, you know, we haven't had a lot of consistency with this franchise post-championship. Not just in terms of success, but in terms of roster. In the summer of 2011, we blew up the championship team. We let guys like Tyson walk, Karan Butler walk. We let a lot of those valuable guys go. And I think it had a negative impact on what we were able to do Obviously, going forward, we weren't able to defend the championship. Not saying that same roster would have necessarily won another one. In fact, I think that would have been a very, very difficult thing to do. But they were never given the chance. Uh, we had then swim throughs for, I think Marion had three more years here. Sean Marion, Jet, and Kid both had two more years uh, post-championship. I mean, it, it basically, or no, they had one year, didn't they? It was basically done. Your longest tenured Maverick post-championship, excluding Dirk, because that's obvious, is Devin Harris, who spent six years across two separate stints. That's it. Dwight Powell's next at five years. And then you got a couple guys now who have been there for three. So not a ton of continuity because the Mavericks have blown things up and churned the roster and churned the roster and churned the roster. The 2016 season ahead of, I think it was the 16-17 season, yeah, heading into what ended up being the Dennis Smith draft pick, that was a very, very difficult team to really follow because it was just such a mismatch of, who's this guy? Okay, yeah, uh-huh. 
like no no cohesion and a lot of guys that weren't here by the next year so there there were issues like that with the mavericks and what they want to do is build chemistry and continuity and the best ways to do that is to get a group of guys together obviously you need to have guys that can play at a high level and who work well off each other but you need to keep them together and allow them to grow especially with young teams and when your two star players are 20 and 23 years old respectively now your franchise cornerstones that's crucial and so i think that's what the mavericks are trying to do here they're running back all of these guys from their bench they've added seth curry who has experience here before and he hasn't played with a lot of the guys on this roster in fact i'd have to look and see because the one season he really played again was that disastrous 16 17 roster i was talking about earlier i don't know that there's anyone left from that roster other than dwight powell here for him uh but still you address all of that you keep it together you've now got I believe eight players as of right now, eight players on this roster with the extension for Dodo that are all here for the next three years. That's how you build continuity. You're keeping over half your roster here for the next three years at least. And if you were to sign Danny Green, if he whether he waits for Kawhi's decision to come out or whether he pulls the trigger, if he happens to choose Dallas you're getting another guy because his market sounds like it's three for 36 by the way yes i would still absolutely do that and the mavericks even after picking up bobin have the room to do that the only guy who's kind of fallen out of the rotation now for what we were hearing and thinking is marcus morris who i was preparing to talk about before the bobin news broke and so i kind of had to change up the article and change up this little segment here on the fly but that's the only thing they can sign him, and if you get Danny Green for three years, that's now nine players that work for a very strong bench unit and have continuity with each other, not just existing in some cases, but for the next three years. That is invaluable if you're going to talk about building a team and growing. Now, here's the thing, guys. Would I have liked to have added another superstar or a superstar and an all-star caliber player? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But I wasn't necessarily in favor. By the time free agency got here, I wasn't in favor of going all out for a Kimball Walker and there's just all your cap money. It's spent. It's done. I said I would prefer to get multiple role players. And a lot of our signings have been just in-house guys, which isn't necessarily what I would have said I'm excited about. I am intrigued for sure and happy to welcome back Seth Curry. Uh, Boban is interesting, but I don't think it's a huge impact move for us. Maybe it can make some kind of impact other than just locker room chemistry. But yeah, it, it's intriguing. If you can add a Danny Green to this roster, not only are you getting a quality 3 and D specialist in your starting lineup, but you're getting a veteran leader who can help this young team grow the next three years. And that's exactly the kind of thing he has said he wants to do. If he doesn't run it back with Toronto, that's the kind of thing he wants to do. So that's why Dallas would make a lot of sense for him. But you have you have a chance to do something that you really haven't done since 2011, 2010, 2011, when the Mavericks won the championship. And that is get a collection of guys together and largely just leave them be now there were tweaks obviously tyson came in in that championship year but a lot of the core of that team was already there for a minute before they went on the run yeah i know there's going to be little examples here and there you can pick apart karam butler came in i think the year before uh and haywood same thing but still i think the point serves that you had even if theirs wasn't the longest stretch tenure certainly not like a three-year tenure for all faces involved in the 2011 team you still had a situation where they had great chemistry and continuity and we haven't had a lot of that here since the championship you're giving yourself that opportunity now with the guys that you're putting together i'm not here saying that it's going to guaranteed work out but i am saying that considering how things have played out for you in free agency this is a wise direction to go, I think. I really do, because none of your guys, none of your bench guys have had to be signed to crazy contracts. Three for 33 for Dwight is a steal. Three for 35, I believe it is, for Maxi, quality. Uh, let's see, Dodo, three for 12. Oh my God, are you kidding me? 
Seth Curry, four for 32. Man, these are great contracts. And I don't mean that in the sense of like, hey, you put him on another team and he's a starter. No, I'm not saying that at all. But for role players, those are quality, very tradable contracts. So even if even if things do develop differently and whether you get to the trade deadline or even next offseason and you're looking to make some kind of move, which we know the Mavericks do better in trades historically than they do in free agency, you have pieces that you can offer up that'll have at least some intrigue. Not necessarily a big expiring contract. With the deals they've made, they're not going to have any of those anytime soon. They're trying to line everything up for when Luka becomes a free agent and they can just money whip them with a max contract. They want to make sure everything lines up for that. And so that's why they're designing these contracts the way that they are. And the fact that they're getting good value for them in the meantime makes them more tradable and it gives them more ability to adjust the cap on the fly as they need. So a lot of things to be intrigued about here. Obviously, it hasn't been the splashiest summer, but I'm really encouraged by the thought of actually putting this nucleus together and then kind of not staying totally hands off because I don't think you can do that, but largely just sitting back and saying, okay, over half of this thing here, we've put it in place where the intent is to leave it for three years and let it grow, let it develop. Luca's going to get better. KP is going to get better. Uh, Maxi and Dwight, they've in- improved every year. They've been here. Same with Dodo. I think you can look at this and say they're going to learn and they're going to grow and I don't know that that necessarily makes them a playoff team immediately, especially with some of the moves going on in the West, not just the Lakers. Uh, the Jazz are making moves like crazy. The Blazers are still the Blazers. Rockets, I don't know about them. They're in turmoil. But there's just a lot of things you look at, and it's hard not to be a little bit intrigued about the future of the Mavericks beyond this next season. Like You look at it and you say, this is just about trying to get back to the playoffs but we still have one of the best duos under 25 years old in the league, if not probably the best. Maybe Boston could try and contend with that, but I I don't even think that necessarily works. So I'm not going to ramble too much longer. I know I've gone off a little bit into the wilderness off of what the subject of my article is. If you want to read my article, you can go to dallassportsfanatic.com or thedallasprospect.com. If it I'll, I'll share it as it goes live here on Sports Fanatic. I'll share that on the Dallas Prospect Facebook page. And, uh, you know, obviously if it goes on, if it cross posts to Bleacher Report like several other pieces have, then I'll link it from there as well. So hang tight. Matt fans, I know it's a little frustrating. Be encouraged, though, regardless of what happens with the Danny Green thing. Yes, that would put it, I think, over the top for a, still a pretty successful free agency period. But at least keep the powder dry for a little bit longer. We still have a lot to look forward to. Just think of where we were two years ago and how we felt about this roster then. But that's all for my time, guys. Until next, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.